Yeah, uh, first name is Eric, E R I C. Last name Anderson, E R I C. Go by Rob. Could you tell us uh, new deployment strategy, I guess you could call it? How, how many uh, airmen are already cross trained? In the 177th, or going through training now to uh, have multiple skills? Yes, sir. So, uh, Major Emerson, uh, go by Rebel from the 177th Fighter Wing uh, down at the Bank City, Sergeant Jorge here. Uh, so, to answer your question, sir, we are actively training our entire Fighter Wing maintenance team for this new mission. Uh, real quick, I'm not sure what you have heard so far, but behind me we have one of our uh, Block 30 F 16s. We affectionately call that the, uh, the Viper. Uh, multi wall capable aircraft, not sure what you, you should discuss so far, but uh, capable of air to ground, air to air missions. Uh, we can carry just about anything in the United States Air Force uh, as far as coordinates wise uh, out there. So, for this ACE concept, uh, again, to answer your question, we are making a big move to get the entire wing ready for this, this type of employment uh, uh, and mission center. Do you have airmen now currently cross trained? Do you have somebody who can both load bombs and refuel? Yes, sir. Uh, my man right here, Sergeant Jorge, he's uh, cross-trained. He's an ammo troop as well as cross-trained to launch and recover uh, the F-16. Where, where have you flown, where you've been deployed before in your career? Uh, in my career, I've been to the Middle East, uh, been to Afghanistan, uh, UAE, uh, Iraq, Syria, uh, Horn of Africa. What do you like about flying the F-16? Uh, it's a sports car. It's a uh, jack of all trades, master of none, we like to call it. Uh, love to fly. Uh, it's been an amazing uh, career. I've been flying it for about 10 years now. Uh, it means a lot. So, a lot like uh, corporations in the civilian sector, like we're, we're constantly looking at ways to do things better, faster, more efficient. And this ACE concept is a way to do that, in which we can take the correct size force, forward deploy them uh, to a location, uh, to take away some of that distance and time we have to get to an objective or a mission set. So really, to me, it's uh, doing things smarter in today's uh, Air Force, more cost effective, and uh, like I said, getting the right uh, size force uh, for the combatant commanders or for our national interests. Sergeant Jorge. Thank you, can, uh, so, Jorge, Jorge to uh, Sergeant Jorge. Quick question for Sergeant Jorge. Yes, first of all, Sergeant, your first name, please. Isaiah. 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 Yes, uh, spell that place. I S A I A S. And where are you from? Philadelphia area. Philadelphia area. Yes, sir. Uh, you are cross trained in what? Please. Pardon. So I'm originally munitions. So we store, handle, inspect, test, program like munitions, bombs, missiles. You call it. Um, yeah. So I originally go from there, and I cross trained into weapons. So essentially. We load them on an the aircraft, arm the aircraft, and send it away. And what was that experience like for you to get that kind of training? Were you nervous? Uh, so, about in our career fields, we work hand in hand with the weapons troops, so it wasn't really hard. It's everything I was familiar with. But now I just have the capability to go further and I'm sure our guys are, be able, are able to go up there and fulfill the mission. Sergeant, what's the difference between loading a bomb and loading a missile? I'm not sure if I can give times. Um, it's still the same danger, 1.1 assets. I mean, you still gotta be careful, but with training. National Guard duty? No, I moved down here in 2000. To Wrightstown, basically, or the base? No, I live out in uh, Lumberton. Lumberton. Lumberton, okay. okay. Yes, South Jersey. Yes, in South Jersey. All right, Sarge. Are you part of this ACE program as well? Yes, sir. I'm the fuel superintendent. We, are, we take care of the refueling of the aircraft. Um, and uh, Pretty much as a refuel aircraft, we, we get the we get the planes up in the air so they can do the ACE program, ACE operation. Now, what about this cross training? Uh, are you part of that as well? Yes, sir. We have uh, me and one other one other, one other individual that uh, we go we part of the surveillance team. We go out to our bases and uh, certify the flight.
supply line and things like that and sure that the fuel facilities in the areas that we're going is fit for the H program. So how challenging would you say that is to, uh, I mean, you're a specialist in fueling, right? Yes, sir. So how challenging is it to pick up a new, uh, uh, and, and, uh, a new specialty, I guess? Um, it's not picking up a new specialty, it's just doing my job, but ensuring that the other places are fit to do our job in those areas. So it's not really a change of... So, uh, one you, thing you had mentioned to me yesterday, um, you don't want one part to break, because something, one thing going wrong could, could disrupt multiple things, right? Yes. We'll talk about part. Oh, okay. So yeah, we go to a different, when we go to the different facilities, we check the facility, we check for, uh, we do check to ensure the, the vehicles and equipment that we use can can handle the pressure, the back pressure and things like that that the aircraft push out. So that's something that we have to make sure we have to check the vehicles for leaks, check them for. You've never done that before, though, have you? We do it on our trucks yearly. It's an annual requirement on our vehicles. Like to pressure checks on our hoses, pressure checks on our vehicles, and everything else to ensure they can fit the mission. And our daily inspection is also a pressure check that we're going to sit on at least this system here, this truck here with the 6,000 regular refuel truck. And our hydro system, we do it daily. We've got to pressurize a bunch of 200 PSI to ensure they can hit uh, any back pressure from the aircraft or any operation. The vehicle behind us, how many gallons is in it right now? That's a 6,000 gallon vehicle or 40,000 pounds. There, the pilots go by pounds. The, the fuse, the, us fuse guys go by gallons. How does that work in translating between the two? Um, we wait, the weight of the fuel is 6.7 miles per gallon. Okay. So what we do is we can, the gallon of the we just multiply by 6.8 and that can get it done for miles that push it. So a little bit of math. A little bit. Now, are you a full-time guard member or are you in the one week a year, one week a month, two weeks a year? No, I'm full-time. I'm a fuel superintendent here at the one away. So what's a typical day like for you? Uh, typical day is come in, we do accounting, we sample the trucks, sample the fuel in the system, do a regular system check. And refuel the aircraft and they're ready for the And a moment ago you mentioned checking for leaks. How small a leak in a truck like this could be a problem? Um, any leak in this truck is a problem. All right. All right. Up to one gallon. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you, Sergeant. Tech Sergeant James Kirchhofer. I'm the crew chief of the 108th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron. And KIR. Crew chief of the 108th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron. 108th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron.
Master Sergeant Brent, um, shop supervisor for the One Way Fuel Shop. And what we have here is a uh, mock up simulated number six center wing tank. And this is what one of the bladder cells looks like that's on a KC 135. And what Fuel Shop uses this uh, for is uh, we coordinate ourselves with the 87 Fire Department and we do extraction exercises on an annual basis. Just in the event, if there's a trap entry while we're working, we like to work with that department to ensure they're able to pull us out of the tank safely. So just to give you guys visual aid, this is the number six center wing uh, cell on a KC-135. This is one of 16 of the bladder style tanks on that airframe. It's a fuel tank. Yes, ma'am. This is one of 16. So this is a combination of 16 bladder, bladder cells and there's also integral fuel tanks on that airframe. What's the difference between the bladder cells? So the bladder is, as you can see here, is rubber. The integral tanks are a uh, metal tank. What's so the advantage of having rubber? So the advantage between it on commercial airliners where they keep your actual luggage when you're flying from state to state, we actually keep fuel in those locations to give to our receivers. So it's extra fuel? Yes, sir. How much fuel is that bladder hold? How much does that, the average, how much does that increase the range of the average? It increases the range to where the aircraft is able to uphold 220,000 pounds of uh, fuel. Yes, sir. 220,000 pounds compared to, say, a KC-10. Uh, KC-10, the most that I've seen on a KC-10 is 320,000 pounds of fuel. Um, but my personal opinion, we are the we take your group. Your first name, Sergeant? Uh, Herbert. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Carl, you can Great job. Sure, sure. Excellent, sir. So what you guys witnessed today was a hot refuel exercise for the KC-135 that we used during the Agile Combat Employment Exercise in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, the reason why we do hot refuel, it reduces, it significantly reduces our time on the ground and increases the survivability of our assets when they're under threat from a, a near peer uh, capability. Uh, we usually turn the jets around, uh, depending on how much fuel we're putting on, it takes about a few hours to turn this jet around. In a combat situation, we can minimize that down to about a couple to a couple hours. With the hot refuel, we can probably get that down to one, again, depending on how much fuel we're putting on. Typically, if we're coming off of a combat sortie, we just didn't offload to a bunch of receivers, we're landing at a, a forward location, we're putting on just enough fuel to get back to where we started or to make it to the next stop. So it shouldn't be that long. So an hour is about ideal. Colonel, thank you so very much. You bet. So when you guys